tell. Okay. <clears throat> so when you're listening, well, why should men decide our destiny? Who are you? Like, how dare you? Can we talk about our own health? Okay. okay. And, you know, people are redefining what can be done if you want to go to a reproductive health clinic. Say, so, oh, you should be probed in your V. Okay. And they wanted to make it a law. But, you know, there's a definition of what rape is. That kind of constitutes rape. Uh, it's unprovoked, but they say you're required to go through that, okay, in some states. This is a joke, uh, you all know, Brian O'Connor. Televangelist Pat Robertson said that he wishes Facebook had a vomit button. It could push whenever someone posts a picture of a gay couple kissing. Of course, the other option would be for Pat Rob Robertson to stop searching online for gay men kissing. <laughs> it's a joke, okay, like, just stop it. No, it's none of your... It doesn't hurt you, so why do you even bother people uh, doing things? This is another joke. These are all memes from the internet, okay? I'm so pro-life, I executed like 500 people, okay? Okay, not all women are women sensitive either. Okay, why older women become lesbians? Well, all the older men are going for younger women, therefore leaving the women with no one. Okay. It's insulting, you know, uh, in terms of how you look at women. And then, you know, Katie Couric, right? When she became the first anchor woman to host a 5.30, you know, news, 5.30 so far as Chicago is concerned, uh, I said, how come her wardrobe isn't right? How come her hair is not right? How come her makeup isn't right? Like, excuse me, are we talking about the news? People don't say that of Brian Williams or whoever they are. Like, how come his makeup is not right? Or how come he didn't cut his hair this way? How come he doesn't have his coat this color? It's always the woman uh, who has to bear the brunt of looks. Okay, and she was really hard hit. But CBS kept on saying, no, we'll keep her. Uh, despite all of the criticism about her. Same with uh, Gabby Douglas. She performed so well. The, the Twitter sphere, oh, they said she had bad hair. Like, huh? It, it's so bad. It's so bad. People were just saying her hair was so bad. Like, hello, she won the gold medal. She's so good. And you're talking about her hair? Yeah. Her own people saying that. Yeah, you said it. Yeah, and Dr. Juanita Johnson Bailey uh, said that she did the research, she published some writings and saying that if you have the same curriculum, let's say this class is called what? 503? Two. 502, Two. title is? And diversity in higher ed. Diversity in higher ed. Okay, the same curriculum, you have a, a white male professor teaching this and a female of color teaching this the students will say, wow, that white man professor is so good. He's so cool. He talks about diversity, color, uh, ethnicity, class. Oh, I love him. And well, black woman teaches this, say, she's a bee. She's so racist. She, why does she talk about this thing? She's so biased. Like, there is built-in bias in all of us that we assume Certain topics are good if men talk about them. If it's people of color, it's taboo. And if you talk about them, you're just biased. And therefore, when it comes to evaluation, the white male gets better evaluation. The colored person or the uh, African-American woman will not do well, or if you're both African-American and a woman, okay? So this is based on research that she did and she published. Uh, she's the advisor of uh, Dr. Lisa Baumgartner, and we read her articles, okay? Now, even worse, they say, uh, for women's health issues, certain states are not good for women. Okay. Now, we saw we have unmasked and unpacked the, the male privilege, okay? Uh, without knowing it, male are just privileged in general, okay, wherever you are. And when we talk of a woman, Oftentimes they say, yeah, yeah, but how is she related to this? Or 
Is she the daughter of? Is she the you know, wife of? He said, no, 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 she is she. Can we just deal with her as she? She is a worth, intrinsic worth. Every, many times she say, but yeah, who's her husband? And so on. So putting more value to the person is something that oftentimes people forget. So with all of these problems, we need to put the woman back in the picture. And gender will see the difference later, the difference between woman and gender. Okay, this was an old poster which has always been revived everywhere. And they put different uh, quotes or captions there. Okay, so the questions that we will deal with here are the following. What are the different ideologies and philosophies related to feminism? That's number one. And number two, what are the different uh, her stories and histories uh, of feminism? Okay, we'll look into uh, both philosophy and ideology and her stories and histories. Okay, so the objective will be to look at all of these, uh, the, these two major themes. I'm giving out my biases. This is required when you're doing research, especially like feminism, and I'm not a woman. Uh, in this book, we're told I have to lay out my positionality, and this is my positionality. I am Chinese, Filipino, therefore Asian, post-colonial male. So my examples will be biased based on my identity. Okay? Uh, when I write papers, they always demand me to put a section, what's your positionality? To me, it was like, I don't know where I said, that doesn't even exist in the Oxford Dictionary. But apparently it does in this 501 book, okay? Uh, in the chapter on critical theory, feminism, and postmodernism. So you have to lay bare who you are and explain what your biases are. I've written many papers on feminism uh, with Mina about South Asia, Hindu women, with uh, Maimuna, women in Africa, in Mali, West Africa, with Flavia in Brazil, Catholic women, Muslim women with uh, Maimuna in Africa, with Aoni women in Palestine, Arab women, Muslim women, with Eric on women in Jordan, and uh, Arab Muslim women. Okay, so uh, all of them were students of Dr. Jorge. Okay, so they were all we were all connected through Dr. Morris' class. Okay, so there's difference between sex and uh, gender. When we talk of sex, we're talking of the biology. Oftentimes we say, well, what are the sexes? Male, female. Male, female, right. But when we say gender, it's not just male, female. It's the role we're expected to play. For example, in Jane Austen's period, you have women who should stay at home, who should know how to cook, who should be pleasant to men, who should know how to do ballroom dancing and to greet men. And your dream is to get married to a proper gentleman. That was Jane Austen's time. That's the gender role. And then in the 1960s, it was brow burning. You know, this is not what I am. I'm not going to be, you know, sitting pretty to get married. That's not the mission of my life. I want to be who I am. I, I will not shave my armpit. I will not shave my face. That was a trend in the 60s. When I was at Berkeley, it was really true. Some feminists really said, who cares? Why should I be beautiful to you? And there are all kinds of feminism. And then the gender role now is fighting for equal pay for equal work, which is still not a reality in the US. Like for every dollar that a man gets, a woman gets 70 cents. That's something now, okay? Times have not really changed much, okay? Now, so how many sexes are there? This is the biology part. Two? Yeah, yeah, oftentimes you know it's two. Yeah, it's true, but a biologist and people in the medical profession says there are really five sexes, okay? The majority are male and female, okay? But then you have hermaphrodite, herms, you have firms, and merms. The difference would be uh, some would have, let's say, a male, you know, main organ and one testes and maybe a 
partly developed female organ in one person, etc., etc. And there are at least five uh, sexes, uh, but we have between one to 1,000 and one in 2,000 live births who are intersexual. And this is scientifically, biologically, medically proven. We don't hear much of that. Okay, so don't forget that this is, you're doing diversity, it's more diverse than what we normally think, including me. I thought there were two uh, sexes. Okay, so dictionary definition, you went to Merriam-Webster, right, or dictionary.com. It's the belief according to which we have to put emphasis on the study of the woman, on the importance of the woman. And the first time the word was used was by the French in 1837 from the etymology dictionary. Okay, I'll skip these, unless you insist on those. Yeah, those are the boring parts. Okay, then Jürgen Habermas uh, was a proponent of critical theory. I'm sure you've read him in 501, if you've taken 501. And Dr. Hora would give talks all over the world about Habermas. And uh, he said that education does not only happen in the classroom, it also happens in the institutions. So we can learn about feminism, place of work, schools, churches, synagogues, uh, clubs, uh, Knights of Columbus, wherever we are. We learn something uh, about it or against it, but somehow institutions are places where we can learn about feminism as well. Okay, and there are also other people who mentioned that we can learn about feminism in other places too, not just in organizations, but also in social movement. These are women uh, in New York uh, who are Filipina Americans. are Filipinas or with the women's organization in the Philippines. Again, my positionality will give me biases in the examples I give. Okay, and Finger is a major author who talked about a learning in social organizations. And another one, Dr. Horace Student too, uh, he published a book and other works on social movements. That's an area where you can learn uh, about social change, including feminism. Now, how, what are the things that I will be using to further discuss feminism here? Uh, I'll give you some case studies, maybe very recent ones, in fact. Pop culture, you've seen some memes. Video clips, um, there's some, right? Do I have a Cassandra control over the sound? Make it softer or louder? Or yes. it's okay? No. It should be okay, but if not, you can. Right from here? Oh, okay, there's a, okay, okay. I see that. Thank you. And then memes, online jokes, and post-colonial examples, where I come from. Okay, now, uh, there are two types of theories. The first set would be the uncritical theory. The second set would be the critical theories. Uh, name some theories that you know and are some popular or common that you've learned in adult and higher ed or instructional technology or in your previous life, in your undergrad, or in your master's, if you're doing your doctorate. One theory. Just one, please. Pretty please, one. Uh, equity theory. Okay, equity theory. One, that would be under critical theory. What else? Just one. You've gone this far. I'm sure you remember one theory. 